Mari Makanami Illustrious, one of the most controversial elements of the Rebuild Saga and the latest addition to the Evangelion pilots. She's half British and half Japanese, named after the Japanese destroyer Makanami and the British aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious of the Second World War. But what exactly was the mindset behind this character? What did Hideaki Anno and the other filmmakers hope to accomplish with her? Let's take a look. Although her name wasn't revealed until an appearance in a 2008 Nintendo DS Evangelion game, Mari was first seen in the preview for You Cannot Advance and according to Anno, her appearance received a very enthusiastic reaction from theatergoers. The response was so positive that Anno felt the need to give her a greater presence than originally intended in the second installment of the Rebuild Saga. There was so much anticipation for the new character among viewers that I felt I had to respond to that. So I decided to increase the number of the new character's appearances. It was at that point that I first began the work of reviewing the second part. The strength of the response to the preview, the intensity of the viewers, significantly changed the way I looked at Break. It moved my heart, and the rudder of the work began to significantly shift. However, Mari wasn't easy to nail. Amo recalls, It was extremely difficult. Ever since I started the new films, I decided on this one trick where I would increase the count of female pilots by one with a new character. I felt there was a danger where if I didn't do this, I would end up repeating the same story and be unable to significantly change things. I felt that even if I had to force it, if I didn't throw a new Ava pilot as an extreme foreign element into the films, then Ava would not significantly change. At the start, I feel I forcibly thrust her into the story. The early drafts were so erratic, being unrelated to the story, Mari's very existence seemed to have no basis. Outside of the pre-title sequence, she practically did not appear at all. While a lot of the hard work was left up to others, Anno did provide what he described as a rough impression for the character. Her outward design was to be that of an English private schoolgirl, a bit Onisan-like, maybe with a love of animals as well, and so on. I think Sadamoto struggled greatly with Mari for a while as well, but arrived in the direction of a mega Neko with long straight hair and so forth early on. But even after deciding on her design, there were other problems to face. There were some difficulties as her personality wasn't coming together. Things started with a process of elimination. There was already a normal character in Hikari and eccentric characters in Rei and Asuka. First off, we tried to take those personality characteristics and aspects of appearance that had not been yet used in Ava as a starting point. She was made up of simple elements, for example, she wears glasses as an accessory which we had avoided using up to this point because they were hard to animate. Yet, if this were all, she wouldn't be a new character, only a not character, whatever Rei, Asuka, etc. weren't. The positions of the characters in the original work were also extremely rigidly constructed. If Mari were to be inserted carelessly, the drama, the story, and the balance of the whole would completely fall apart. Although I was aiming for change, if it was only different from the original work, in the end, it would be nothing but a counter to what had come before. In order to further make Mari unlike anything the series had seen before, Anno, as mentioned earlier, depended heavily on his creative team. I wanted Mari to be an outsider within myself as well as an alien presence in the world of Ava. Because of that, I entrusted a significant portion of the work concerning her to Maki. If I had taken too much initiative, there was a risk that she might become just like the already existing characters. I think the result was very good. I am pleased with it because the character contains something of the feeling of an alien presence. If Anno wanted his new character to shake things up, Mari definitely accomplished just that. In no time, she distinguishes herself from the abrasive Asuka and introverted Rei with her cheery personality, taste in Showa-era music, and sniffing LCL habit. Furthermore, in You Cannot Advance, she replaces Toji as the pilot of the 4th Evangelion, pilots Unit 02, and gets two extended fight scenes. And you cannot redo, she is seen as the partner of Asuka and one of the primary pilots of the Misato led paramilitary organization. Voice actress Maya Sakamoto described the character like this Mari is completely different from everyone else. That was immediately clear to me. I was born during the Showa period, and the usual saying of that time was keep calm and don't overdo it. Mari is quite an unusual character. She often says Neon, she's very energetic, very self confident. She lacks common sense in the way she talks, and she's cute in a cartoony kind of way. Later in the interview, she added, Anno told me, Mari does exactly what she says. Fans don't have to worry about her being a liar. There's a perfect harmony between what she says and what she wants to do. She has a certain depth, but there's no point in suspecting she may have a hidden agenda 
or that she may be faking it. She's a simple person. The first time I read the script, I thought she was a suspicious character, cute and strong at the same time, but I couldn't understand her completely. But with time, I realized she isn't the kind of person who would deceive other people. She's a very simple character to understand compared to the others. That's what Anno told me at least. Mari is a character who knows herself and behaves accordingly. I made sure to convey confidence and that in her eyes, piloting an Ava is fun. Anno revealed that in trying to change Evangelion, he discovered it was more rigid than he thought and that the flow was very well constructed. In order to change Evangelion, which is what he hoped to do with the rebuild films, he had to destroy it and Mari was one of the key components in doing so. I believe the comment about Anno intending to destroy Ava is often taken out of context. When viewed in light of its surrounding comments, Anno was talking about changing Evangelion. Adding a completely different character or element would require doing things differently and that's what Mari accomplishes. You cannot advance. Her introductory film is where the rebuild saga really begins to deviate from the original television series and takes on an identity of its own. It's worth mentioning that there was a lot considered which didn't make the cut such as Mari acting as a rival who completely upstages Asuka throughout the second film and at one point Mari was to be something of a dog and cat lady with tattoos of her pets. However this and other ideas never saw the light of day but regarding the tattoo idea Yoji and Nokido joked because Mari hasn't undressed yet nobody knows with things like this we try too hard to develop Mari's character traits. When I think back on it we were only discussing forced or absurd things and asking how can we beat Rei or Asuka we had a tendency to get a little bit too much into an impact contest. You Cannot Redo was a massive curveball, raising far more questions than providing answers and as a result many of the characters suffered in the development department, namely Mari whose character is not expanded upon after getting introduced in their previous film. However manga readers were given something more to chew on. Mari appears in an extra chapter of the manga adaptation of Neon Genesis Evangelion as a friend and classmate of Yui Akari, the late mother of Shinji and wife of Gendo and a student of Kozo Fuyusuki. However, manga author Yoshiyuki Sadamoto admitted, oh that's not in the storyline, it's just an extra chapter for the manga volume, it's even apart from the movies, like fan service. Just something you mustn't think about too hard, it's just something that went through my mind. I thought it would be funny if it were like that. He added, since she appeared in Joe, Ha and Q, I wonder what her role in the story would be and when I asked the staff, they told me it won't be possible to really go further in one film so they had to tie the main story up and that Mari may have almost no screen time so I wonder what the point was and decided to add a little bit of her story in the manga on impulse. So it's really not something the staff of the movies thought about or asked me to do, just something you can consider as a play of mine. Lastly, Sadamoto stated, when we see Mari in Joe or Ha and we see her call Gendo, Gendo-kun or smell Shinji's odor. She's doing many strange things. Besides, she seems to like the songs of the Showa era very much since she's singing them. So my guess is, whether she's really interested in the Showa era or she's born back then and has not aged since. And you know, since in Q, they introduced the concept that children who were chosen as pilots don't age. I'd endorse the latter, saying Mari is someone from Shindy's mother's generation and that she somehow became a pilot and didn't age since. But again, it's only me imagining all of this. The final installment of the Rebuild Saga, currently titled 3.0 plus 1.0, will release at a currently unspecified date in 2020 and hopefully it will provide more details about this character. In the recently dropped 10 minute sneak preview for said film, Mari is the central character of an intense action scene set in Paris. Her being the primary pilot while Shinji, Asuka and Rei are missing in action does make sense. But might this also suggest a larger role for the character? I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Until then. What are your personal thoughts about the British Japanese pilot? Do you love her, hate her, indifferent? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you again next time. Take care.